Hello, lovely people. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Share again with some um. Yeah, it's because you're always like, <laughs> hello, lovely people. I don't have a hello. I just have a hi. I always feel like when you do that welcome bit, I feel like we should have some like children's theme music playing before them. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. hi. Hello, lovely people. <laughs> I think we should be on a regular like, talk show. Yeah. Do you not water that plant over there, Jessie? <laughs> that poor little plant. No, welcome to my office. You're also welcome to water the plants in here. The ones behind are not real. That's why they still look good. The one over there, unfortunately, <laughs> is not looking too good. Look, I'm really tired. We're about to get on a very long flight. Not literally about to. Tomorrow, about to. Yeah. We're going to Malaysia tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who are new here, hi, we're Jessica and Claudia. We're married and we're not plant tubers. Oh, oh my God, when you said plant tubers, I thought you meant like, Tubers, <laughs> like types like of food. No, like some plants pl uh, like grow from tubers as opposed to bulbs. Claudia could be a plant tuber. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Jessica. This is my channel. Um, I talk about disabilities, chronic illness, and LGBTQ plus issues, and often how they intersect, along with parenting. This is my wife. We have a child uh -huh. who is now an actual child. He's two and a half. He's not a baby. He'll definitely tell you that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, she said, I can do everything when I'm a man. I was like, yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the patriarchy crush is so young. I know. <laughs> no. But what we're doing today is responding, reacting to a video that we made like three years ago when, we when were you pregnant. were pregnant. Yeah. And we actually didn't know how our idea of parenting was going to work out. I know, yeah. I kind of, I'm wondering, were we like, were we those kind of obnoxious, like, first time parents to be that thought we had it all planned out? Or were we actually quite generous to ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in my head, if I just, in my own memory tells me that we had a plan, it's pretty much gone to plan. I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did go into parenting with very much a, a parenting style in mind. We very much we're like, right, we're going to we're going to do Montessori, we're going to be Montessori parents. We still do that. Yeah, I'd say so that's, that's, so that's good. Tick for us. Hey, that has, that has worked out. Has everything else though? Well, let's find out. Number one is around privacy. So we won't show our child's face, but they will appear in videos. I think we will include their legs and their hands, like non-identification. Like, like from the back. Yeah, like no face. Right. Yes, think. we have miraculously managed with no help from Rupert in two and a half years to not... You say no help from Rupert, now he is always like, not, don't take a photo. I mean with no help from Rupert because sometimes he does just get in front of the camera. Yeah, but not like, really. He absolutely went through a stage where that was quite difficult. Yes, I mean it would have been... he learned to walk and was just like, yeah. hi. And to just get like out and about, like you quick kind of content was quite not. difficult because we were just always with Rupert, obviously. You know, if you look at our phones, most of our photos, like 99%, are Rupert. Like all parents. Not just the back of his head either, like, you know. <laughs> no, I remember someone left me a comment on Instagram that was like, it's going to be really disturbing for your child that all the pictures you have of them are of the back of their head. Can you <laughs> just, imagine? No, growing like, up just as a because child. I only post pictures <laughs> without his face doesn't mean... No, we very much share his, but have a lot of pictures it's of his quite face, funny don't worry. Because we had a... Um, Amazon Echo Show. We had an Amazon Echo Show and um, we were showing it in a video in the background. So I made sure that the photo slides were just photos of just us, or if they did have Rupert, it wasn't his face, to make it see like it's still like. And then we were eating dinner, and Rupert was I want one with my face. So I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Haven't put those back up. He was already disturbed, it is true. <laughs> he is himself quite interested in, in photography. Yeah, um, but, And in performing. But more but... in like taking the photos. Yeah. He's acted out like taking photos. It's very sweet. He lines up his toys. Photo! Photo! <laughs> I like to uh, claim that he's getting that modelled from me, thinking, oh, my mummy's so cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't go around going, photo! <laughs> oh. Do I? <laughs> no, no. Maybe Although, I do with him. Instead of cheese, we do say sausages. I don't know why I came up with that one, because cheese, obviously, it's like, Cheese. Cheese. Sausages. I mean, when sausages. Now when I say sausages, <laughs> I, I, I deliberately them. like do my mouth in it. <laughs> he does also um, randomly decide to pose, like, and he's like, take a picture. He's very demanding. Like that time when he went along the street just holding the hand of mannequins. 
And he's like, take a photo, mummy, take a photo. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's got a hand, he wants to hold and have a photo with it. A bit <laughs> as long as it looks like a statue, not just random people. It's okay, he's not going to be abducted by a random person. He has held the hand person. of a random lady once, thinking it was me. <laughs> and I remember that, like, and she turned and looked at him and then looked at me. And then he looked up and then looked at, like, and then went, oh. And then looked at me. Um, and I remember that in that that so much because I did that when I was younger. Oh. Did you ever do that? I was in a bakery and I like held onto this lady's hands, thinking it was my mom. And then went tugged on it. Went, I want a cheese straw. And then, <laughs> and then looked up. And I was like, and you probably don't care <laughs> and don't have the power to buy me one. I was like, that's my mummy. <laughs> so apparently, oh, I was dear. lost in a Malaysian supermarket. Oh, they are my big. Mom, my mum was like terrified, like she couldn't find me. And in the end, she found me hiding in like the clothes rack. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been in there. Aww. I don't think I was scared. They they said oh, my okay. mum and dad recount the story as if I was I was playing hide and seek. Oh. But no, I hadn't told anyone I was playing this game. Mm. <laughs> Our child will spend lots of time in nature. Will your child be raised up with lots of time in nature? Yes, absolutely, 100%. It's very important for us. Awkward silence. One of the things about our parenting approach is that we're very child-led, right? And we want what's best for our child and we follow what our child likes. Yeah, I don't think there's any shame to be like, he's. And but he's not an outdoorsy cherub. And our garden is like a mud pit. So like, even though we built like, we didn't build, we got someone. <laughs> don't <laughs> Claudia's slightly ashamed she didn't build it herself. He's got a little like play house at the end of the garden with a slide and a swing. And I think he's never once gone on the swing. Fair enough, it's one of those seating swings and he's not quite big enough to do that. And he's gone on the slide like probably like a handful of times. But we do go to the park. Yeah. And he does like running around the park with me a little bit. He has got more into that. When you say running around. Mm. No, he runs. He runs now. Mm. Mm. And he is interested in nature because he watches the foxes in the garden. He does. And I put bird food out every day and we observe all the birds. And he, he knows the names. Yes, he is learning the names of all the birds and he's very pleased about that. He likes, likes catalog cataloging types of... Uh, leaf. Earlier he was looking at a picture of an acorn and was telling me about how acorns come from oak trees. He likes flower arranging and naming different types of flowers. He's he like does. very interested in it all. He's Can... not an outdoorsy person but that's not that surprising because you're not and we're not like I love like nature and walks and things like that but I'm not like an outdoorsy person really either. Am I? I think maybe you did quite like the idea of having a child who might want to go on some I mean, nature I took, walks with you. I took him to forest school playgroups. They're so much nicer in theory <laughs> because it was bloody cold like, and wet and damp. And yeah. like they put like, there were all these like different play stations, but like anything that was like not waterproof was completely soaking wet. Yeah. And like, it was like, ooh, let's make mud pies. But then like once like three children had played with them, it was like everything's covered in mud. Also, Ripper doesn't really like being dirty. And then the only thing to wash your hands with was ice cold yeah. water. So every time he gets muddy, he then has to like wash the mud. Yeah. But then if all you've got is ice water, then Really gonna go but he did south. enjoy it. I will say that it was like the first time that he actually stuck his hands into a bucket of water to play with some bubbles without like being like, ooh, you know? And I think it's because he was wearing like a full body waterproof. And I think it was just by that point, it was like, well, everyone else here is gonna like covered in mud, so. But I could see my breath, it was that cold. That's not an experience shocking, that he has begged to repeat. The shocking thing is some kids do that like nursery, like every day. Some children do it by choice, yes. I don't know if it's by choice because they're children, <laughs> but like some people like send their children to basically just be in the woods all day, every day. Yes. With just a bit of tarpaulin to go under if it rains. Yeah. And I was like, no, so, so we're so, not so extreme it, outdoors. So, yeah, yeah, so our nature parenting is questionable and we've decided we actually do want to move closer to the city anyway, so. Jessica is still keen on Scout, but that's when they're older. Yeah, that's when they're older. If he wants to, we're going, I'm not going to make. We're going go glamping. glamping. <laughs> we're going glamping. Yeah. And then your cousin freaked you out by like, oh yeah, we're going. Oh, you look forward to staying in a tent. You're like, we're not staying in tents. <laughs> Wait, no one told me <laughs> we don't actually have to stay in a tent. It's like a family glamping place, but not everyone stays in a tent. We haven't been told what our accommodation. We haven't. Is. Yes, we've not actually been informed. Just because, like, I'm going to play the disability card. I'm, I'm not staying in a tent. Absolutely playing the disability card. <laughs> I have a lot of cousins, and they are not disabled. Well, you know, I'm not staying in a tent. Who knows, maybe we can play the disability and pregnant card by then. That is the goal. Yeah. 
Their clothing will have bows, slash, their clothes will have no gender. Will you dress your baby in gender neutral clothes? And another question was like, will you avoid gender stereotyped colours? We're going to dress our baby in a lot of light blue because have you seen baby blue on yeah, a baby? It's, so nice. it's adorable. I, you know, that could have been a lot of boys with leaning heavy. No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> My baby shopping knows no bounds. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty well with that. Yeah, to be fair. Um, um, I mean, it's quite, I think as he's got old, it was easier when he was younger to dress him a bit more gender neutral because I think baby clothes in general are made like a bit more gender neutral, like bloomers and like bows and like little things like that. As they get older, there's definitely like more division in like boy cut, girl cut, boy designs, girl designs. As the person who <laughs> buys all the baby clothes, um, yeah, the thing I find the most interesting is that I always tended to dress him in a style that I would call quite like traditional not like gender neutral in the modern sense, but it's a very like traditional boy style Yeah, that is today read as being quite feminine. So like Peter Pan collars and puff sleeves on his tops mm -hmm. um, that would not look out of place on a little boy in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. But nowadays everyone goes, oh, your daughter's adorable. Yeah, it's not about like even just thank dressing him like you. really kind of smart. Yeah, makes him look more. It is quite interesting because he he chooses his own clothes now, and he chooses what he wears, and, and you really can't make him wear something he doesn't want to wear. Um, even even if that's trousers and it's cold, he will choose to wear. Yeah, some shorts. literally the other week, like last week, it was like minus two, and he went to school in shorts. Like, okay. They were really nice, okay? But then he they wore, had a really pretty check on but them. But then he wore like really high, like knee high socks. Yeah. Which so there was this like bit of his between his like uh, like basically between his top of his thigh and his knee that wasn't Incredible. covered. And his teacher then told us at the end of the day that apparently he went, this bit needs to be covered. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah. But fortunately, he goes to Montessori school, so she was like, we we get that. Yeah, uh, that was his. So his decision there. <laughs> like, yeah, that was. Oh, this one's so interesting. So we will encourage open communication or talking back. You'll encourage open communication, aka talking back, as some parents call it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a really. This is a very interesting one because I don't think we ever. I don't think we even realised before Rupert was born how much having him was having a third person coming to live at our house. I think you you kind of think that they're more of a, like a, a baby lump for a very long time, but Rupert is and has been for like a year plus. Just I don't know. very I think, much like little personality. I don't know, I think you're discrediting yourself a bit because I think we always acknowledged that he was, because I remember having conversations with you and like really like highlighting parts of books that spoke about preparing the environment for this little person and this mm. small human and you should treat them as if they're a guest that you're welcoming into your home and like yeah. like a guest that you would welcome you would provide the things that would make them feel comfortable so we always had that mentality of um him not belonging to us but just being a part of our family and us trying to make his home as comfortable for him as possible. It feeling very much now that he's two and a half, like a little human being person in our house with his own wants and likes and dislikes and opinions is probably in part to the fact that from day one we have always treated him as such. Yes, and, and I fully want him and expect him to be able to express how he feels and I think that that's so healthy and so much better. I, I think it's very good that he can say, I don't like that you've done that thing, mummy. Like you lifted him off the sofa earlier mm -hmm. and he got upset about it and came and told me and was like, mummy just, mummy really upset me well, because she context. lifted me. No, it's, it's fine. We don't need the whole <laughs> context. You had good reason to lift him. He wasn't getting down in time, it's okay. Point is, but he came and he said to me like, mommy lifted me, it upset me, she didn't ask me first. Yeah, yeah. And, and you immediately said, yes, you're upset because mommy touched you without asking for your permission. Which is yeah. what, but that's what I'm saying, it's like you're acknowledging straight away, but you're already aware of that being a thing. I think like, because we're already aware from the beginning that we were to treat him as an individual being 
Yeah, and he immediately calmed down because yeah. all he wanted was just the Oh, he's so aware of feeling knowledge of like his yes. thoughts and feelings now, like he loves books about feelings, but like he's his like language around it is so good now. He Oh I feel a bit worried today. You know, things like that. Yes. Or like I'm a little bit anxious about the play date later. Yeah. I don't really want them to touch all of my things. Well at dinner tonight he's like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about our flight to Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> and also he's really good at recognising my feelings. Like we were packing together as much as we can with a little toddler. I tried to pack something into a small space and then I was like, oh, that's not going to work. So I unpacked it all and then he was like, no, mummy, that is going to work. So he started getting in and I was a bit like, oh, no, Rupert, it's not going to work. Let's, let's just not do that. And then he went, mummy, don't get angry. <laughs> and then I just thought, you know what, there's no point getting angry or like irritated or anything because he's just trying to help pack right now and it's not really going to be a fruitful packing event. It's just a sharing moment. Just let it go. Do but he know. like does very much remind me that like, to like, <laughs> follow up to that story. What did happen? What? It did fit. It did, yeah. The follow up is that it did. <laughs> he came and told me about that yeah, one. Yeah, because, <laughs> probably because I actually calmed down. Because I tend to have a habit of rushing. <laughs> and having a toddler makes you calm down. It does. Or speed up, or, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's a bit of a roller coaster ride, to be honest, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> I don't, I think you have to calm down because you have to take things at their pace. I think. When you Sometimes try and hurry them, fast. but when you try and hurry them out the door, I don't think it, it takes you longer to actually get out the door. If you take it slow and you say, okay, I know you want to be independent. I, I see that. I see you want to put sometimes... your own shoes on. Yeah. So you do the first one. I'll do the second one. If you push, they'll just push harder back. So just don't push. Yeah. It's like... It just doesn't go anywhere. So you have to instead just be like, it's like, it's, it's a big willpower test. <laughs> then in the morning I'm like, we're gonna be late. Do you not understand? If we don't get to school, they're gonna lock the doors and not let us in. And he's like, they'll lock the doors and not let us in. I stay at home. I'm like. <laughs> Egg on your face. <laughs> we won't force our children to do any specific sports. Uh, will you force your children to play sports? Force them? Well. Oh. No. 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 I mean, he does ballet twice a week. And for someone who's like, my, like he's two and a half. And we, we, when we tell people now that he does ballet twice a week, I think they might think we are quite pushing him into that. But we really aren't. Like, he went to a ballet class. He really liked the teacher and the format of the class. She then started teaching a different day. So he wanted to do that class. But he still wanted to do the original class because he's His got friends, friends were in, in that, that class. So now he does both classes. And we just yeah. thought, well, let's just see how it goes and decide which class he likes. But now he just really likes going twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to, and we had to originally start ballet because he was really interested in ballet music. And he wanted to know how to properly do it. And Jessica liked the idea of taking him to ballet. Yeah, and I was quite happy with that. But yeah, now he's really And it's quite ballet. hard to find nice classes for two-year-olds like a lot of classes like a lot of sport classes in particular are for like three plus or even mm. four plus like under th there's like we noticed that there's a bit of a gap in the market between like two and three it's like what do they think everyone's doing I'd say between like 18 months really. yeah there's like baby classes like baby and mummy yoga baby music class baby sensory class you know all those sort of things swimming classes yeah. and then it's like there's no you like no, okay yeah. now what? and then it gets to the class where you just kind of leave them and it, what, what do i do with the two-year-old then it's really strange isn't it everyone in london is going to be rupert. like that's not at all the case <laughs> Rupert in london yeah. rupert said um he wants to try tennis he says he's going to do that when he's older. He wants to play football when he's older. Well, he wants to do basketball when he's older. Yeah, basketball was a big one mm. that he was really interested in. He's not interested in cycling particularly. He's not interested in swimming. We did, we used to do swimming a lot. He was like, no. He likes going to a hot. He likes going to pools on holiday. But he doesn't, 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 doesn't want to actually go swimming in a pool. Jessica's very pleased because you can't do ballet outdoors. No. <laughs> And you wonder why he's I not an outdoorsy type. I don't have to stand in the cold. No plastic and noisy toys allowed. If people give you plastic, noisy, ugly toys, you'll awkwardly hide them in a cupboard. <laughs> we have actually made a very large cupboard just for this purpose. We have like stuck to that. It's not like, um, it's not allowed. Yeah, it's not kind of like a, oh, we absolutely refuse to have anything that is plastic or anything that makes a noise. We definitely started introducing those later, like we, we were a bit more mindful at the beginning. Like I think 
Yeah. I mean, okay, we can count, we can like count on one hand. It's more what he for has the now. reasons. He has Duplo, that is plastic, but it's not noisy. Oh, actually, you know what? It's it is noisy when you rummage around in the box. God, that's noisy. <laughs> It upsets Claudia. <laughs> I just end up tipping them all out. I'm like, no, because he's like, we need that block. <laughs> um, what else does he have? He has. Oh, he went to his cousin's house and he and he borrowed a um, a plastic multifunction bus. It's got like everything in one. It does. Have, it sings the alphabet to you. It reads out numbers to you. It like tells you about where it's going that day. It sings songs. Anyway, Rupert thinks it's fantastic. I think yes. it's the first time he'd he ever come. He finds it a bit. It was the first time he'd ever come across something where he pushes a button and it plays music or sings or like does something and he was like, oh. Yeah, he likes it a little bit and then he finds it quite overwhelming. I mean, I find it overwhelming. It's really overwhelming. Yeah. So he, he will, he enjoys using it. If you turn right, under a certain right, thing, right. it becomes a piano. <laughs> Because it's a multi bus. Why does it become a piano? I don't know, but I think that's what sparked his interest in wanting a piano. I don't know. But yeah, so if you flick it onto a certain setting, it becomes a piano. And then he was trying to play it like a piano, and then was like, I need a piano. But also what's annoying is, um, if you stop playing with it for a little bit, it goes it obviously just goes quiet because you've stopped playing with it. But after like a, a pause of about, I don't know, like one or two minutes, it goes, bye bye then, and turns off. And it's like, <laughs> but now you've just reminded the child about it. Yeah. Uh, musical books. Oh yeah, musical books. But very nicely selected ones. We've got one that's like um, The Four uh, Seasons. Nutcracker. We've got The Nutcracker. And the Peter Bow Bow, Ra- Bow, Bow which is a Chinese one. Um, it's like Chinese nursery rhymes and also English nursery rhymes. And then we've got Peter Sung Rabbit. Sung by a real person. And then there's Peter Rabbit does a nature walk, which is like the sounds yes. of like... Uh, birds. Birds and things. Which is all really lovely, apart from when they go through the woods and it's meant to be the wind, but it's just like... <laughs> no, that's supposed to be the, the nuts. It's the squirrels rummaging the nuts. Oh, it's so awful, that noise. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you can see why we don't have a lot of uh, <laughs> certain types of toys. <laughs> Hashtag sensory problem. No screen time allowed. You won't let the baby grow up attached to electronics. True. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because we, we've told Claudia's nephew that the TV's broken in our house. Oh yeah. This, yeah. Yes. I don't know, the reason that we didn't do a lot of like plastic toys or toys that have batteries in is really just because they, didn't, they don't tend to give much. Like they don't tend to stimulate in the same way. Mm. So he can sit down with a puzzle for 45 minutes and just do it over and over again. Like his current favourite, the fire engine puzzle, where he just does this little jigsaw um, and then tips it out and then does it again. Mm. I mean, some people could argue, oh, you can get jigsaws for an iPad, but the difference is like it doesn't, it gives you that. The sensory yeah, feedback. Yeah, it's like in a, with, an I, with a screen sort of puzzle game, yeah, you're getting the mental stimulation, but you're not getting that sensory um, and um, practicing with your. Yeah, um, you're not building your pincer grip. Yeah, all those like uh, fine motor movements. And you have to think of skills as like scaffolding. So for later on, it's you know, going to help him when he comes to writing or any of those things. Um, so from that perspective, it was kind of like, I don't know what giving him access to things like an iPad would give him this. Yeah. Other. And he's also been always a book lover. So I know, like on um, a long car journey, you can just well before because we because people know we're going on this book. on this flight, which is like a thirteen hour flight, and like I've had two people be like, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and they're like, oh, have you got everything packed? I'm just like, yeah, just like you know, just getting everything ready. Mainly, it's just getting making sure we got stuff for Rupert for the flight, you know, like games and like snacks. And then like I've had two people say to me like, oh yeah, and their pad and making sure they've got things on it. Is this the thing we should do? <laughs> well, obviously no, but I know that's what obviously a lot of families do do. Yeah. But like I, I don't know, but I never think oh we're missing out oh what a, like a trick that I'm like missing. I'm just yeah. like it's a bit like it, like this might sound bad to people who use it and I'm no judging of it, but it's a bit like opening Pandora's box personally because it's like once you present that screen and the games then I can imagine that is quite a fun thing for them to want to do and it is convenient for you and it has like, it's one small thing which has got lots of games, lots of entertainment. I just quite like the fact that we can try and find other ways before we go to that because I think Mm. probably we will end up with some kind of tablet when he's older. Well, obviously at some point, yes, because he will be part of the the world. Yeah, exactly. And we all use things. So it's almost like... But I think that... There's also something about not letting him have any control or say over it. Mm. 
that I think is quite important. Like I really enjoyed the family aspect of how we experienced screens when we were much younger. Yeah. Where if we watched TV when we were kids, it was like the TV is in the family room and you sit around with your siblings and your parents and it's only on for a tiny bit each day and you've got to like, you've got to try and watch it at that time. Yeah. And that's it. And your parents would always know what you're watching because yeah. one, there's a TV guide so they can actually vis visually see it. Um, and secondly, like if they like, like you say, like the only screen possible is like the common TV, which mm. people can hear or see as they're walking through the room or whatever. Yeah. Whereas now it's all quite private and like. Yeah, I wouldn't let him watch anything on that I haven't. Don't like the idea of him watching anything that I haven't personally seen. We do. Which is the disagreement we have. Oh, uh, cool. yeah. Because but you will watch I would say like him. I would say that we are that's probably the one thing that has changed from our three years ago. I think we have become more relaxed with screen time than we thought we would be. But I think that's because we we needed that strict guidance to to have like a baseline and like a set kind of rule in our head, which I think we're quite good at. Mm. But Jessica is stricter, it's true. And like I have been like reminded a few times to like rein it back a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like for instance, he only really started watching anything at the age of two. So we did do two years screen free, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Which is what our what our goal was. And then since he turned two, we've been a bit more relaxed. So he's watched Frozen multiple times. Never all the way through in one go. He has, but he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the last bit because it all gets a little bit. Oh, uh, not with us though. He's not sat with us and watched it all the way through. I think go. he has with me. We have almost made it has through he? at the very beginning. Yeah. But anyway, now he only likes to watch it up until. This like, is when I find things out in these videos. He only really watches it until Anna makes it to Elsa. Okay. And then Elsa's big snowman says, go away, and like chucks him out. And, yeah. then, he's, and then he's like over it, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the movie ends for him. He doesn't watch it every day. How often would you say? What? He... No, he doesn't. What, you mean no, Frozen? So he... <laughs> no. No, he actually doesn't watch Frozen <laughs> every day, Claudia. Come on. No. I mean. He watches Frozen like once a fortnight. <laughs> Okay, he watches half an hour of Frozen once a fortnight, up until the go away. <laughs> he also watched The Bear and Drap yeah. recently, which he actually really loved, which I was quite surprised by. But... <laughs> and it was so much more enjoyable for me, because I was like, I don't want to watch Frozen again <laughs> <laughs> for the first half an hour. I got told off for playing him Toy Story, and Jessica said that's not appropriate. We only watched like the first 20 minutes, but obviously when it gets to like showing his neighbour Sid, I was like, yeah, this is a little bit... Mm -hmm. Not right. It is. Not. And but we never saw Sid really. I just like I kind of skipped over that bit because I knew that was bad. But Jessica pointed out that even the bits where like Woody is like jealous of Buzz and like shoving him off the bed and like yeah. is quite aggressive is like kind of a little bit aggressive. Like I was like, oh yeah, because we mm. noticed Rupert was starting to like play with his toys in the same way that Andy plays with his toys, like kind of like a little bit rough and like shoving them off the bed and things like that. Andy plays with his toys in that film by bashing them yeah, together. Yeah, and then he like throws them on the which floor. Which is so random because he's quite old. And then he throws them on Why the floor. Why can he not play with like, his toys properly? Yeah. The new little girl is much nicer with her toys than like the later movies. Yeah, maybe they learned some lessons Maybe they realised, yeah. People being like, why is this kid smashing his yeah, toys? Yeah. So we don't, so he then able to watch that that one time. But we went to Disneyland Paris and he saw all the characters. Maybe did we go to Disney first? And we went to Disney characters. first. You've never seen. No, but he's like Woody. I love Woody. I love Buzz. And then I was just like, Yeah, let's watch the movie. <laughs> and then I got told off. Um, but anyway, and then so, but since then, because he's like, I want to watch Toy Story, and he got a little bit obsessed with like, I want to watch Toy Story because he felt that he had seen because he knew it existed. Now you know, I did yeah. that Pandora's box thing. I'd shown him. He'd like, Oh my god, it's it there like on the screen. So now he watches Toy Story, the Hawaiian Hawaii adventure or something. It's like a nine minute little Toy Story short, which is actually really hilarious. And it features like Ken and Barbie. And Ken's really sad that they haven't gone to Hawaii. Did you say Ken and Barbie? Yeah. You put Ken's name before Barbie's name. Well, I think in this particular, you know, Perhaps it's going show, Ken is the protagonist. Oh, then, and then there's another thing he watches. <laughs> called Save Our Wildlife, which is actually really cool. It's like a sky made thing. And it's got little children doing like this travel program about like how to do um, like animal conservation. And he really likes that. Okay. Those are the like, those are the four things he's ever seen and continues to watch over and over. <laughs> but 
You do have to sit with him and talk to him about it the whole time because that is a rule. Yeah, it's a shared experience. We don't just like leave it on and go. Nope. And you have to say, one thing I do love that Frozen has brought into our lives is when Rupert gives us his nightly performance. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> because we get a ballet performance at night times um, before bed, is he attempts to sing Let It Go. So there you go. That is a summary of our parenting journey so far in the last yeah. two and a half years. Um, I guess when we finally get pregnant with the second one, we can do a what would you like as parents of two? Yeah, I think that'd be interesting. I think that's like a common thing that people are like they have like they readjust their expectations on themselves or Yeah. <laughs> or maybe they think like actually you know, know what I'm smashing it. I mean I definitely I think we value Rupert's independence a lot. Uh -huh. He has a little like his little kitchen and he can you know he gets himself dressed. I don't know how we'll manage that with two of them because they will be very differing ages. Uh, different stages. That'd be all right. People seem to say it's easier than the number one. Number two. Number two is easier than number one, apparently. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like more from us, you can follow us on Instagram, at Jessie and Claude. And of course, you can always subscribe to my channel if you haven't already by clicking the subscribe button down below. And there's a playlist right up there in, in the top right-hand corner um, with more videos for two of us. <laughs> that was so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will be very soon in Malaysia. So keep watching to see what fun adventures we get up to. Where there'll be some oh, real plants. She's still going. <laughs> <laughs> Not fake ones. These ones will be well and truly dead by the time we come back. They're fake. Not that one. That one, no words. Bye bye. Bye. bye.